I'm in Las Vegas at Apex 2023. It is so good to be back here at this show. This is a show where manufacturers from all over the world come to talk about automotive and heavy duty parts. We're gonna be interviewing some of the exhibitors and we're going to be showing you the sites at Apex 2023. So I hope you enjoy not only the interviews, but also getting to see what this show is all about. Hi, I'm Patrick McKittrick, CEO of Full Bay. We're at Apex in Las Vegas. Uh, it has been a great day. Uh, we've been able to talk to a lot of different people. Uh, Full Bay is a returning guest. The, the company has been on our program a couple times. The last time though, it's been a while. Jacob was on in July of 2021. And so I'm excited to have the opportunity to talk to you today, Patrick, uh, to learn about what, what's gone on in the last couple of years. Uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about the trends of, of what it's like at a repair shop these days. Yeah. So we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. So first of all, welcome to the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's uh, great to see you. Great to be here at Apex. It's uh, The show is hopping for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about just the trends uh, at the diesel repair shop level what have you been seeing in the last couple years what's changing what do we need to know yeah but you go back two years so many things have happened right the, the parts shortage has come and it's gone and come back a little bit uh technician shortage has has come and not really gone no uh, and and then the last few months or, or year or so right the economy has slowed down a little bit right yeah. trucking is really taking a hit you know the, the spot rates have come down contract rates are down uh, and eventually that trickles down to the repair shops, yeah. right? the internal shops and the independent guys. So um, a lot has been going on and you know, with, with interest rates continuing to be much higher than you know, people would like them to be, uh, you know, all sorts of operational efficiency becomes more and more important. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And I know from the parts perspective, you know, you're trying to support a repair shop and you want them to buy more from you. But um, if they don't have the trucks in the bay to fix, then, uh, you know, that, there's not much they can do. And it's not like you want them going out there manufacturing reasons to repair right. a vehicle, right? Right. You want to well maintain. That's right. Not, not over, over maintained. maintained. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. So um, when it comes to how uh, uh, an owner or an operator of a repair shop needs to cope with all of these changing things. Um, like, what is your advice to them when you talk about operational efficiency? Sometimes when these changes happen, it's the perfect time to change something. What do you think they should be looking at right now in their business? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. And it is, a lot of times you need uh, you know, a trigger to kind of incentivize change because people get, get used to the way they've done things and said, well, it's always worked, Jamie. Why do I need to change it? Yeah. And now as people have seen like evolve or die, right? You will go away if you don't evolve your business. And one of the biggest things we try to focus shops in on is efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that has many layers to it. But ultimately, if you can't run a more efficient business every year, you're going to get people are going to catch up to you, pass you, and your customer is going to become your competitor's customer at some point. Whether it's because they're doing things more efficiently so they can do them cheaper, yeah. more efficiently so they can get the truck back on the road uh, quicker, or just in general easier to work with. Okay, so let, let's break that down because one of the things I heard a lot of people say, especially um, at the shop level, is they said, look, we were too busy before. You know, we had a shortage of people. Every, every person was booked all the time. We couldn't stop to make the changes needed. We couldn't stop to train. We just were too flat out. So if things have gotten a little softer, not quite as busy, uh, let's talk about two or three of those specific areas that they should look at that would make a big impact on operational efficiency. Yeah, absolutely. And you can start off with some really basic things, right? Just the basic process of invoicing. That seems so basic and in 2023, I'm saying to you something that Jacob probably said to you two years ago, right? which is, man, you'd be amazed how many shops manually create and send invoices. And you, know, you might have a shop that, that has customers on net 30 terms. Yep. That 30 days doesn't start until the day they get their invoice, right? Right. So if I take another week or two after I do the work to send the invoice, now all of a sudden I'm floating for 45 days maybe on a net 30 term. So trying to automate something as simple as creating an invoice. Yeah. And then you can back it up into the repair process, right? If I'm gonna automate creating the invoice, well, that means the data has to be put into a system to create the invoice automatically. And when the data is put into a system and tracked, 
well then I don't forget to build things, right? How many shops are out there that look up and they're, they're doing their cycle counts and they realize they're low on inventory, but they haven't built mm -hmm. all these parts? Well, that's because they forgot to build. Yeah. And how many hours did they forget to build along with those parts? How many shop supply fees did they forget to build? And when you can automate things, you just don't have the chance to forget. Right? Yeah. And, and that's a big area for people to improve. And this has a big impact on the cash flow of the business because if you're if you're artificially elongating how long it takes for you to get paid, yeah. right? You're extending it because of this inefficiency, then that has that direct impact on how much cash you have available, which impacts how you manage and run your business. It, it absolutely does. And it's just an area that a lot of shop owners don't focus on because you know, they're focused on, let's turn the wrench as many times as yeah. we can, which is great. And we need efficiency at the technician level, but we need to run efficient businesses. And it's critical for the country that the independent shops thrive, right? Yes. Because they flat out, the dealer network cannot support all the maintenance that has to happen. Internal fleets, a lot of them do their own maintenance. A lot of them do some of their own maintenance. Right. 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 The internal, the fleets that have internal shops still rely on the independent guys. Um, and we need those businesses to be strong. And if you're not running a financially strong business, it's going to go away. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. This episode of the Heavy Duty Parts Report is brought to you by Find It Parts, your ultimate destination for heavy duty truck and trailer parts. Discover a vast range of parts at finditparts.com. Don't spend hours a day looking for parts. Instead, visit finditparts.com and get them right away. Parts availability and quality have a big influence on fleets and owner operators' total cost of operation. If they can't find a part, it means more downtime. If they install a low quality part and it fails, it means even more costs like tow bills, hotels, meals for the driver, and lost revenue. That's why we recommend Sampa. They manufacture a wide range of advanced parts for commercial vehicles. Their website has an intelligent product search engine and broad coverage of suspension, steering, and fifth wheel components. Expect more. Expect Sampa. Visit sampa.com today. Okay, so invoicing, that's an easy one uh, from the perspective of, uh, you know, it's a basic one. Uh, what's another area that they should focus on? So it's tech, I mean, I'll say technician efficiency, but in general, getting people to spend their time doing their job not waiting around, right. not doing other low value tasks. But if I have a master mechanic who I'm paying $50 an hour, $60 an hour to in some cases, do I really want him walking over to the parts window, waiting around, pestering the parts manager for, hey, did you order that? When's yeah. it gonna get here? He can do all that from his from his uh, bank, right? Yeah. And that's where you're eliminating some of the, the superfluous activities that these guys are doing yep. and focusing them on what you're paying them to do. So uh, that's a good one for technician efficiency. But then makes everyone else, sense. right? The parts manager, same thing, right? Yep. He doesn't need to be running back and forth to the bays. He needs to be able to clearly get from the tech what's needed, when it's needed, and he can go off and, and do his quoting and, and ordering and, and get the parts. Yeah. So, uh, like, as I said, it's been a couple of years since you've been on the show. I know that a lot has changed at Full Bay. Let's talk a little bit about some of the new things that you're offering repair shops. Yeah, I mean, a lot has changed, right, in two yeah. years. So I, I'm new, obviously. Jacob, the, our founder, was with you last time, and Jacob's still with us. He's he's my boss. He's the chairman of the board. So yeah. he got, got the promotion from the CEO. <laughs> um, but as a company, we've evolved, right? If you look back in 2021, we were probably around 50 to 60 employees, you know, probably getting close to a thousand customers. We have almost 200 employees today. We are 4,000 customers. Wow. So we've really grown and we've done that because you know, we focus in on heavy duty repair. Yeah. You know, we want to be good at one thing and really, really work at it. So we spent a lot of time and money investing in the product. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a couple of new things. Uh, we have integrated a payments offering into the platform. Okay. So now, you know, a customer can, or a shop, can take payment from their customer directly in full bank. So that kind of takes that automation from invoicing right through to payment. Exactly. Yeah. Right. If the shop is storing the credit card, they can, with authorization, just ding the card, or they can physically swipe a card, mm -hmm. or even better, a, a customer of a shop can go into their portal, see all the service history of their vehicle, and any open invoices, and just pay their invoices right up, right there. Oh, fantastic. Right. Yeah. So uh, what else is new? 
So we've worked really hard on some of the communication between the shops and their customers. Mm -hmm. So a lot more messaging uh, triggers and opportunities. We've introduced more text messaging. Uh, we'll have coming out here pretty shortly two-way text messaging. Nice. So a customer can actually respond to the SMS mm -hmm. message. Uh, and that's been really helpful. And then another big one, we made an acquisition last April yeah. of a company called Dieselmatic. So uh, Full Bay and Dieselmatic joined forces. Dieselmatic focuses on driving uh, digital marketing just for heavy duty shops. Yeah. Right? Um, and Full Bay had started out offering some basic websites for mm -hmm. customers because there was a need. Yep. There was a lot of customers sure. who didn't have a website. Well, they're, they're focused on running their shop, not on, right. on being a marketing company, right? And you know, we could offer them a website that was better than not having a website, right. but we weren't professional digital marketing you know, folks. So we acquired Dieselmatic, and this team is wholly focused on not just creating awesome websites for customers, but helping manage their SEO and SEM, yeah. uh, all of their content creation, right? You as a shop, you don't want to have somebody no. writing articles and blogs. No. Dieselmatic does that for you. And you know, as you can build your brand, it certainly helps them to attract new customers. Mm -hmm. But even today, it helps attract employees, yes. right? Employer branding is dramatically undervalued. You know, everyone talks about the tech shortage, but then they kind of forget, wow, I need to market to candidates. Yep. So the Dieselmatic crew has been incredible. That business has grown really, really well the past year and a half. And so we're excited because Full Bay helps you optimize the way you manage the, the business you already have. Dieselmatic helps you get more business to then optimize and run really well. Yeah, so, so you, you have to have that critical first step to get your business organized well, make it efficient, and then you can scale. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So That's fantastic. Well, congratulations on all yeah. your success. Thank you. Thank you for taking some time to uh, visit with us and, and talk to our audience. Um, if people want to learn more, they should go to fullbay.com. Yep, fullbay.com in the top right corner. You can request a demo. Yep. And uh, we're really good at getting back to you quickly on that. So yeah, you hit that button and we will reach out very shortly. Fantastic. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good yeah. to see you. What a great week that we've had here in Las Vegas. This is such an excellent show where manufacturers of automotive and heavy duty parts come together to talk about the real issues. We've had some great conversations that I'm anxious to share with you. It was a good week. We can't wait to come back next year. If you haven't followed the show yet, head over to heavydutypartsreport.com. You can follow the show for free or you can subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Either way, don't forget to follow the show so you never miss out on any of the great content that we're putting out including interviews from Apex 23 in Las Vegas. Thank you for watching this video. Click here to subscribe to the Heavy Duty Parts Report YouTube channel and click here to watch another great episode.